Hello, welcome to BCM 241 Media Ethnographies. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview uh, of the subject and introduce you to the basic concepts and the learning assessment tasks that you'll be undertaking as part of the subject. All right, let's get started. So, hi, uh, my name is Dr. Christopher Moore. I'm a senior lecturer in digital communication and media at the University of Wollongong. You uh, can find me on Discord and uh, those of you who are doing uh, uh, online tutorials will be doing those tutorials via Discord. So that's a, a great resource for online learning and uh, but if you have any um, uh, you know formal communication uh, that you need to uh, enter into with me uh, you can use my email i'm available for consultation and we'll talk more about that later on uh, and if you want to schedule a time to uh, consult with me then you can send me an email or send me a message on discord we have a, a head tutor for this subject, Amna Nasir, uh, and that's Amna's uh, email address. Amna will be handling uh, all of the uh, reasonable accommodations, the academic considerations. If you are unable to uh, uh, participate in a particular tutorial in a, in a certain week, then you can let Amna and your tutors know. We have uh, two other tutors, uh, Jasmine Connell and Richard Hall. And you can find all their details uh, on the subject Moodle page on the, the right-hand side of the Moodle. Okay, in this subject, you are going to learn about a research methodology and research methods that fall under the kind of umbrella term of ethnography. You're going to be using some of those methods to investigate a media niche. And we'll talk about what that means in a second. You're going to be using your investigation to create content for that media niche. And you are going to be developing an online persona within that media niche. Now, when I say a persona, I don't mean a, a fictitious character or anything like that. I mean an online presence. So when we, uh, when we talk about having a, a Facebook account or an Instagram account, then you have a, an online persona. And often that'll be a personal persona. In this subject, you'll be creating an online persona that is attached to that media niche in some way. You'll be analyzing your experience, uh, both as an audience member of that media niche and as a content creator in that media niche. And you'll be producing a digital artifact, and we'll talk about what that means in a second, and then uh, a research report summarizing your experiences. So what is a niche? Originally, the, the term niche uh, comes from the idea of a, a kind of ornamental recess, like in a wall, where you would place a statue or a decorative object, right? So think about the idea of a, a place for a specific object. In ecology, the word niche is used to explain the position or the function of an organism within its environment. So, for example, uh, koalas koalas have evolved to eat certain types of eucalyptus leaf. Uh, and so it has a certain habitat. And that's the koala's niche. In economics, uh, the term niche has become really a way to refer to specific markets within broader categories. And so you might think of uh, organic pet food. Organic pet food is a specific niche within the broader market of pet foods. So when we're talking about niches, we are being quite specific. And we'll unpack that uh, as we go uh, throughout the subject. 
So think of uh, a niche then as a, a specific place or position that is suitable for a specific purpose. Right? Quite, um, it, 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 it's not narrow, um, but it is defined. So media niches. Media niches then are specializations, particularly for content creators working online. Now, you should be starting to think about what are some of the media niches that you're a part of as an audience member, or maybe you're already creating content in a particular niche. One of the media niches that I'm researching at the moment is uh, neurodiversity media. So I'm quite interested in uh, content creators working on uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook and, and social media and Instagram and all those places. And he, here's a great one. Here is a, here is a, a, a Facebook page where the content creators uh, are called Finding Cooper's Voice. And it's about parents uh, of um, children with autism. Here's another content creator, Harry Thompson. Um, and he is creating uh, uh, content online, but also running a service for online consultations for parents and professionals and autistic adults. So these are some of the examples of really interesting media niches. So in your first blog post, you're going to be writing about what your media niche for this subject might be. You don't have to lock yourself in too early. You'll be creating a pitch in week three, which I'll talk more about in a second. But um, how do you decide what your media niche is? The, the best way to go is to think about what your personal interests are and or what your professional aspirations might be. So if you have a particular field that you think you want to be working in in the future, this subject is a great way to develop your portfolio for that career path. Or you maybe you have a particular interest that you think would sustain you in creating content for this subject. So this might be an, a, a, a something that's really familiar with, you know, you might be already be a, you know, a particularly engaged person in this interest, but it might be a new interest. This could be something totally new. Maybe you've always wanted to try crocheting. Maybe you are uh, interested in uh, a particular animal breed. Uh, this might be something that you explore as a new interest, but Maybe you feel more comfortable drawing on something that's established. Now, this can be a little bit tricky. Some people will find drawing on established interests really great. But then when you turn that into work, that can be quite confronting. So think about that. And we'll, we'll talk more about these in the tutorials. Uh, again, focus. Uh, you could focus on your career. Uh, or this could be an opportunity to start that entrepreneurial exercise. Maybe you want to produce goods or items within a certain niche this could be a way to figure out how to do that so let's talk about the learning assessments for this subject you will be creating an online public persona as part of your uh, what we call digital artifact and each week there is a blogging task and in-class activities that are designed to build your digital artifact for this subject. You will be creating uh, online video and audio uh, each week. You'll be producing short, medium, and long-form content. And uh, we'll talk about how the subject is designed to help support uh, this media content process, both in the blogs uh, and in the, the in-class in class work. So a digital artifact is just a, a broad umbrella term for an online thing. And the nature of the digital artifact is defined by you. And so uh, I, I'll be working, I, I've decided I, th I thought I'd, I'd create a digital artifact for this subject to help show you 
um, how it's done. And I'll be I'll be coming up with my own media niche and, and working on producing content in that. And so I'll be I'll be working alongside you over this over this session. So that's going to be interesting. And uh, I wanted to share uh, Olivia Burt's um, feedback that that she gave uh, us about her digital artifact. Um, she created the, the the digital artifact, the simple thread. And um, she explains how the digital artifact is a powerful piece, a collection of work, a showcase, a portfolio that you can then show prospective employers. And this is the number one piece of feedback we get from BCM graduates is that having their WordPress blog, having their digital artifacts, having these showcases is what gives them the advantage when it comes to interviews uh, and securing jobs that they're after. Um, Olivia says that you know the, the, the digital artifact should always be about your passion. It should be something that will help you succeed in your future career. And that's where uh, the simple thread, which was her digital artifact about um, developing knowledge about fashion, uh, particularly stain- sustainable uh, fashion. And she said that it was, um, you know, it was particularly useful in helping her land her a marketing role in a company that she wanted to work with. So, so I think I'm, I'm, I want to say that this, this is not just an opportunity to complete a subject and get through the subject, although that's certainly um, uh, viable. But this is something that, that can help you build your future careers. All right. So let's talk about the the weekly blog posts. There is a weekly activity that you have to complete as part of this subject. Now, that activity is 300 words and a two and a half minute video. So it's not onerous. Uh, I created I created the, my first blog post week one yesterday, and it took me two hours to write the post and create the video. And so that's a that's a reasonable. Uh, time frame to think about how long this should take you each week. Some weeks it, it will take more, some weeks it'll take less. So blog post one, due Friday, week one, is just 300 words on what your media niche might be. In week two, we're going to start mapping the, the industrial relations of that media niche. Uh, Now, week three, you'll notice there's a gap there between week two and week four. Week three, there's a separate uh, blog post uh, that that will be the pitch for your digital artifact. And then you will be doing peer commentary. So you'll be looking at uh, each other's pitches and providing feedback. Uh, And so then you'll write a summary of that in week four. So then blog posts one, two, and three are submitted uh, Friday of week four to the to the learning assessment Dropbox. Now, please make sure to download the cover page. Uh, if you if you don't submit your blogs with the cover page, they won't be marked. And the cover page is at the top of the Moodle page, and your tutors will show you where that is. So the first half, or at least the first quarter of the subject is quite th- theoretical, or rather it, it's involved with looking specifically at ethnography. And then as, as you start to understand the processes of ethnography and how that can be used to create content, we switch to a more practical focus for the subject. And I will be leading you through uh, the, the videos, the, the, the lectures, different strategies and approaches to generating content. So in week five, for example, you'll be engaged in content generation. So this might be uh, a podcast. This might be a video essay. This might be um, uh, a a medium form video and so, uh, or a live stream. And so you'll be producing that content and writing about it in your blog post, which is 300 words or two and a half minutes. So it'll be a summary of the activity that you've done for your content generation that week. Week six, we're going to talk about platform proliferation and how you can take that content and start spreading that uh, across multiple social media platforms. And we're going to go through that process three times. So 
by week 11, you're going to have a, a huge body of work that you will have completed um, for your digital artifact. So then blog posts four to nine are submitted in week 11 for assessment. But you'll be getting feedback on them each week via the tutorials. So as I said, week three, there is a separate um, pitch presentation. That'll be a two-minute video and a 250-word contextual blog post. Now, those are hard limits. The, 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 the task for the pitch is to get exactly two minutes on your video. That can be tricky, uh, and we'll talk about strategies of how to do that. Finally, you're going to submit a, a research report. It's only 1,000 words, and it will be using the methodology known as autoethnography, writing about the self. And the lectures, as we go through, will teach you how to do that. And we'll be doing exercises in the tutorials to get through that as well. So you can see there that the, 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 the kind of trajectory of the subject is that a more consistent approach to content production throughout the semester and then a simple reflection report at the end. So rather than kind of having a, a subject that spikes activity at the end, it, it, it kind of crescendos in the middle and then drops down towards the end. And so hopefully um, it's a much more kind of balanced experience for your learning. So the most important thing you can do now is go to the subject Moodle page, which hopefully you're already on, and complete the subject questionnaire. This is uh, in week zero uh, on the Moodle page. The questionnaire gathers some basic information um, about who you are and, and um, it has two really important questions. Now, these, your answer to these questions will structure the way your tutors and myself provide you feedback. So when we come to marking your work, we'll look up your responses in the subject questionnaire and we will go, all right, this is what you've said that you're trying to get out of the subject. Here's where you're at. How can we close that gap? Or, you know, you, you, so how do we do that? All right, two questions. What grade do you expect for this subject? Now, you're in second year. This is a 200-level subject. So you will have been through first year and you will have an understanding of where you're kind of up to in your grades. So here is where you say, okay, this is kind of what I've done in the past. This is where I think I'm, I'm at. Then the next question is, what grade do you aspire to in this subject? This is an equally important question, perhaps the most important question for your tutors and myself to know. What, what do you want to get out of this subject? Do you just want to pass? Now, if you just want to pass, I am totally on your side. If you are just looking to get through your degree and get out the other end um, and, and your focus is on other things, I understand that. That's totally okay. So you can say, look, I'm just after, I'm here for a pass or maybe I'm here for a credit. These are great. We can, we can, that really helps us make sure that you achieve those things. But if you're looking for a distinction or a high distinction, then there is a, a higher level of engagement that's required. And so in, in providing feedback to you, we can calibrate that feedback to help you achieve those things. Let's talk a little bit about expectations in detail. On page 10 of the subject outline, the UOW policy explains that one credit point is worth two hours of study per week. And that includes lectures, tutorials, workshops, and practicals. So if you're in a six credit point subject, which this is, you're expected to commit 12 hours of study per week. Now that's a long, that's a, that's a lot of time. And we understand that you have work commitments that you have social commitments, that you have family commitments, um, you might have carer commitments, and, and so on. And so my view is that really you have to, you have to temper your expectations with what you can achieve you know, realistically within the week. 
So you've got at least one hour of lecture content each week. They're on videos, they're on Moodle. You can do them at your own pace. You know, I, I often watch online videos um, at two speed, right? Get through them faster. You've got a two hour tutorial and you can use that tutorial um, strategically to get a lot of your learning assessments done. And then, so that's that's three hours. So then there's nine hours that uh, are, are, you know, are committed according to the six credit points um, to to the subject. And really, that's going to be about uh, negotiating between your expectations and your aspirations. Um, I do, I do want to just say a few more words there. So. Um, there are, there are a couple of things that you should do. So preparation. So making sure that you've gone through the Moodle page for that week and that you're ready for the tutorial, that you've watched the lecture before going into the tutorial, that you've had a look at some of the recommendation readings and some of the further materials that can help you think about what you're doing and, and um, developing your knowledge, that you come prepared so that you have a digital device. Uh, we, we are in the, the, the Maker Studio for most of the tutorials, so you'll need to bring your own device. And it's expected that you'll have a device that you can access the web. Now, if you're, if you're comfortable using your phone, that is totally fine. But you need to be able to create content uh, and um, create written text and engage online with a device of your own. That's really important. And if you're an online student, uh, we are using Discord. And so it is expected that you will have a microphone and that you will be able to, like everyone else in the face-to-face uh, -face classes, participate uh, in, in the subject. A last point about aspiration. If you're... If you're looking to get a, a distinction, but particularly if you're looking to get a high distinction in this subject, I recommend that you send me a message on Discord and that we have a chat about how to achieve that in this subject. And I can recommend, I can look at what your your progress and I can help make further recommendations about how you achieve that. All right. That's it for this video. I hope you have a tremendous uh, session. I'm looking really forward to, to seeing all the content that you create. And I will speak to you in the next video.